let's start talking about the types of personality disorders are out there in the cluster A. These are going to be the paranoid personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder, and schizotypal personality disorder. It's, these are the three main weird personalities that you need to know for USMLE step one. Now, these patients will have odd or eccentric actions. They have an inability to develop meaningful social relationships. And we're going to talk about that in a second in each of these uh, specific personality disorders. And they have no evidence of psychosis. That's important because just because they're weird, just because these pers per, uh, personality disorders cause these patients to be weird, doesn't mean they're psychotic, right? They don't have hallucinations, delusions, and uh, or disorganized thinking and speech, right? That is the definition of psychosis. But they're not in psychosis. They're not psychotic patients. They're just weird. Now, there is a genetic association with schizophrenia. And I simply remember this very, very easily. I think about the two cluster A personalities, schizoid, schizotypal, and both of them are very close to the word schizophrenia. Therefore, there is a genetic association with schizophrenia. I mean, I don't know how easier I can make that for you guys. Uh, but just remember, there is a association with schizophrenia. So let's talk about our very first personality disorder, paranoid personality disorder. This is a uh, disorder where a lot of patients are very paranoid. They have a pervasive distrust. The name pretty much says it all, okay? They're paranoid. They don't believe in what's happening. They are very accusatory. That's very important to understand. They accuse a lot of people of being paranoid or doing bad things, you know, being against them, targeting them, even though the person might not be doing that. They have a very suspicious view of others. And because of the suspicious view of others, they have a distrust, right? Uh, this can become a become into a profoundly cynical view of the world. A lot of these patients might even have, you know, uh, conspiracy theories of their own that they believe in no matter what. So because of all these things, like I said in the previous slide, it's difficult for these patients to have interpersonal relationships, not because, you know, just because they don't want to make them, because, you know, they don't trust people, they have a distrust of people, they have a suspicious view of others. But then when they accuse someone, uh, the person is like, you know what, man, after this, I don't want to be friends with you. So it becomes difficult for paranoid personality dis disorder patients to have close relationships with anyone. They have difficulty, like I said, in building close relationships, and they often project. That's their main ego defense. They'll project what their insecurities or what they are thinking onto someone else. And we've talked about projection before, so go visit our video on ego defenses. But what they'll often do is they'll uh, uh, accuse someone else of being paranoid. They'll say, no, you're paranoid. You're the one who thinks that, you know, aliens are reading our minds, stuff like that, right? Uh, that is the main definition of paranoid personality disorder on the usmla step one on your practice questions you'll be able to spot this from a mile away they make it very simple they make it very easy and you kind of can't mix this up with anything else if they're accusing someone if they don't believe anyone if they have a cynical view if they're suspicious then they're probably paranoid so that's paranoid personality disorder next we got schizoid personality disorder and uh, this gift is pretty much the best best gift you could have for this disorder in my opinion and I'm going to talk about that in a second in this case patients with schizoid personality disorder are voluntarily isolated from the world they choose to be alone they choose to be withdrawn that is the main hallmark of this okay they're not sad they're not depressed about it they don't want to be out in the world they have limited emotional expressions right they won't show a lot of emotions they'll be very simple very muted down and because of this patients or people might uh, misunderstand schizoid for autistic but that's not the case, okay? These patients choose to be isolated. They're content with social isolation. They're okay with it. It's voluntary. So let's just, you know, put a, uh, a connection right here. And on top of that, they don't enjoy close relationships. They don't want them. They don't need them. They have, uh, they, they're okay being alone. I said earlier that these cluster A personality disorders are difficult, uh, cause, it, cause patients to have difficulty making relationships. Well, in schizoid, those patients choose not to have relationships. They want to be left the fuck alone. That's, that's them. Uh, they have lack of close friends, and they have little to no interest in sexual experiences or any hobbies and interests, right? That's very important. This key part, the fact that they have no hobbies or interests, pretty much differentiates uh, uh, schizoid from 
uh, autism. A lot of patients who are autistic usually have something they're very, very interested in, right? They may not want to let go of something. It may not be a hobby, but they could be a savant, for example, right? Uh, schizoid patients have no interest. They have no hobbies. And along with that, they have a very flat affect that goes with the limited uh, emotional expression. So when on the USMLE Step 1 or on your question banks, you may get a question about a patient who lives alone, often doesn't come outside, doesn't talk to anyone, has no close friends, and someone from the church may go and give them food, some company, just the essentials, and they don't really talk to them. They take it and they say thank you, and that's it, right? You may consider that weird, and you may consider that antisocial in the very loose term. I'm not talking about antisocial personality disorder. We're going to talk about that later. I'm saying they're just antisocial. They don't want to be talking to people. That is a clear giveaway for uh, schizoid personality disorder. Okay, that is schizoid. Keep that in mind. So that's that's that. Uh, again, association with schizophrenia. Uh, there is a genetic association. Sorry. So. With that being said, we're going to talk about our final personality disorder, which is schizotypal personality disorder. In this case, these people are just weird, man. Like, this is the key definition of, you know, uh, cluster A, the weird personality. Like Professor Trelawney, freaking weird. So these people are weird. They have a fear of isolation. This is completely different than schizotypal. Sorry, schizoid. Schizoti schizoid and schizotypal are, in my opinion, are completely inverse their fear, they hate being alone. They have odd beliefs and ideas. They may have magical thoughts. They may be superstitious. Uh, they believe in telepathy. And they're very eccentric in appearance. Man, this is like completely uh, perfect. This gif is perfect for this example. Also, they may believe in like, hey, you know, these charms or everyone should have crystals. They have healing powers, man. And they probably have schizotypal personality disorder to believe that some rocks can heal you because of the magic in the rocks. Eh, shut up. Anyways, um, their key feature is that they're open to challenging their belief. That's important. They believe what they believe, but if you challenge it, they'll consider it. They'll think about it. They'll entertain you. So that's very important. Now, they may reconsider their superstitions. They may become a little stitious instead of being superstitious. That was an office joke for those of you who caught it. So congrats. Bonus points to you. Anyways, they may reconsider their superstitions uh, just because they're, gonna, they, they're willing to take criticism. They're willing to challenge their own beliefs. And they also have no hallucinations or cognitive impairment, right? You may be thinking they're psychotic. They may be going through psychosis. No, they're not. They're completely sane. They're completely normal. They're just weird. They just have schizotypal personality disorder. And they believe that the events that happen are related to them in some way, shape, or form, right? It's not really rational. If something happens in Australia, it's happening to them. It's happening because of them. Or something about it is related to something maybe they did, something they said somehow. You know, that's the that's the belief they have. So that's schizotypal personality disorder. And I hope that helped. Thank you so much for watching this video on Cluster A personality disorders. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys don't know, you can find all of these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. So if it's Apple uh, Podcasts or Spotify goes, just search Mad Medicine and we will pop up and you can listen to us on the go at the gym, at the clinic, in the bathroom, anywhere you want practically.